name is David Nartz and I'm the Clerk of the House of Commons, which means I'm the Principal Advisor to the House on Practice and Procedure at Law. But I'm also the Head of the House of Commons Service, which means I am broadly responsible for all the people who work here uh, and for the money we spend. So there are about 2,000 people working for the House of Commons Service. Some of them also work for the House of Lords. In other words, they're providing services to both houses. Some of them are just providing services to the House of Commons. And it's a huge range, a huge range of jobs, from office jobs, catering jobs with a large catering department, providing a lot of restaurants, banqueting facilities, and so on. We have a works department, so we have a lot of craft employees, uh, do various things in maintenance, building, project management, and so on. Uh, we have uh, hundreds of researchers, meaning people doing analysis of politics and policies for members. Uh, and we have all the people who man all the um, select committees, so they're doing, again, policy analysis, they're a sort of secretariat, um, and, uh, and so on. We have, obviously, a human resources department without which nothing would happen, or lots of things might happen which shouldn't, uh, and a finance department. Uh, and so it's, what is unusual about it, it's a fairly small organisation in some ways, but it does have an unusual spread of skills. It was my predecessor, Robert Rogers, who set this up, who was very keen on it, as I am as well. In 2011, when he took over, it was one of the things he desperately wanted to do. And it was, I suppose, for two purposes. One was to give an opportunity to young people, exclusively young people, many young people, who would never have thought of coming to work for us in the House of Commons, but who could offer something and who, for various reasons, maybe needed some help to find a job and to get a qualification. So that was an outreach, if you like, to help them. But it was also to help the House of Commons Service draw on the widest possible pool of talent. Because if we're not recruiting from the widest possible pool of talent, we are not the best service we can possibly be. That's obviously not a unique perception from here. Every employer has that feeling that they want a, a diverse workforce because they want to get the best staff so we're not doing it as a charity or for fun um, and we found from it um, I think a third and perhaps unexpected benefit that it has benefited the staff who already work here those who manage the apprentices have gained from it personally and professionally a great deal some of them have never managed another member of staff before because of their grade and the nature of their job and they found it intensely rewarding, both professionally and, of course, personally, to have someone to, to help to, to transmit their skills, their experience to, and to see them grow and then often get a job here. That, that has been really yeah. satisfying for them. It's had a, a ripple effect of saying, we are a good place to work for, we're proud to work in the House of Commons Service, and this is one of the things we do. Well, apprenticeships offer that mixture of people being on the job and doing something, which are, well, these are not made up jobs uh, that the apprentices are doing. Apprenticeships are obviously real jobs, but at the same time, they are getting visibly better because they're going off for training uh, every week, on Fridays, um, and at the end of it, they get a, an award, they get a vocational qualification which proves that their apprenticeship has led on them to a defined level of skill. So if we were to take, if we just advertise the jobs, I suspect other people might have got them. Uh, let's be honest about that. I mean, this is, in that sense, potentially a displacement taking an apprenticeship. Um, but these are these are people who might not have had the demonstrable experience or skill to get the job, but who, who experience has shown that by working as an apprentice, getting the additional training, and especially the on-the-job confidence and learning that it gives them, that at the end of it, they are um, skilled people. And that's the end of an apprenticeship, is the, is the achievement of a a certifiable skill level. And then many of the apprentices have stayed on here and have actually got proper full-time jobs here. And they are, well, some of them turn limited. Some have gone elsewhere, which is just great. Ultimately, my ambition is, is that someone who started as an apprentice, uh, depending maybe where, maybe who, will wear this badge in, in 30 years' time. There's absolutely no reason why the clerk of the house shouldn't have started as an apprentice. Um, a lot of our FTSE 100 companies and our chief executives who started as an apprentice somewhere, necessarily the same company. So especially as we, we roll out the idea of apprenticeships to things other than maybe the conventional areas where you might expect to find an apprenticeship, it becomes more and more likely that this is the way in which the career progression goes, rather than assuming that the 
graduate fast stream entry as it currently is, is the only way to get on the service.